Amigos, amigas, it is time for the January Fragrance Awards. I've been doing this series for a few years now. It is my chance to share with you the fragrances that I wore over the past month and put them into these made up categories to give you my impressions of them. I can't fit everything in, but I've got a bunch here that I wore in the month of January, and there were a bunch more that I tested that I sprinkled throughout other videos. Before we jump in, I wanna give you a heads up of some juicy sales that are on the horizon. This weekend, as in a couple of days from the day that this video posts, there's gonna be a massive weekend sale on a popular site, and I'll be posting a video this Friday sharing with you my top recommendations. So for all of my friends that have been on a low buy or a no buy in January, get your little wallets warmed up. This is gonna be a good one and you're not gonna wanna miss it. And then there will be a few other really good sales, including a really big one with So Avant Garde, and I'm a partner to them, and I'll be sharing with you my top recommendations from that site. And exercise those fingers so that when it comes time, your cart is full and ready to go and you can apply your discount code and check out. Let's put that aside for now and let's talk about January fragrances. Okay, so the first category here is going to be best for the season. I'm not a person who really wears fragrance just by season, but it is nice to think about like what really goes with the weather. So in Central Virginia here, it can be incredibly cold in the month of January. In fact, we have our coldest temps usually in January and February, and that's when we get our snowstorms. Like we had a snowstorm in January. I don't know if you can call it a storm. <laughs> We got snow, but when you are south of the Mason Dixon line, if you know what I mean, you know, if you get like a dusting of snow, everybody's running to the grocery store and grabbing milk and eggs and, and bread and all of the essentials as though, you know, apocalypse is coming. So we got a dusting and it was nice. It was very, very nice to watch from the windows. And then we also had like a 70 degree day last week. So it's all over the place here, but I tend to think of January as a time to pull out very heavy, cozy fragrances. And I really, really love this one. This is a flanker of Juicette Parfums Accident à l'Avenir. And this one is called the Madeleine de Prost. I hope I said that right. The Madeleine de Prost flanker. <laughs> there are a few flankers to this line. The original Accident à l'Avenir is mostly vanilla and caramel and a pretty thick one at that. It has this sort of oily, buttery quality, which is uh, just special for really cold weather. I'll tell you about this one in a second. And then there is the Le Gourmand flanker, which is a more recent addition. Let me know if you've tried that. It's supposed to be mostly a chocolatey fragrance, or that's the defining sort of note in that flanker. And I'm curious if it is a creamy chocolate, milk chocolate, dark chocolate, or more on the white chocolate side. So which of those? And if you've tried it, is it creamy or is it a drier chocolate? I'm really curious. And then there is the creme de la berry flanker as well, which has more of like a strawberry cereal type of scent to it. This Madeleine de Prost is supposed to be more on the fruity side. Peach and apricot are notes in the fragrance and there's a, like a biscuit. So when I think of biscuit, I have to remember that we're probably thinking about the British version of biscuit, which then makes me think about like cookies. What do cookies smell like? But I have to tell you, I don't get a lot of the fruit from here. I think the combination of what's happening here is a sweet vanilla that does give me the sense of like, and I forget what they're called. It's a certain kind of vanilla, like almost like a wafer, more than like a biscuit than a cookie but it does smell sweet and gourmand and a little tiny bit bready, almost like yeasty too. I really enjoy this. It's moderate in projection and longevity. It's one that you probably do have to reapply if you're intending to wear it the whole day, but it's very cozy, very gourmand, very sweet, but not cloyingly so, which is important. There are some gourmand fragrances that can be really overwhelming in the sweet direction. I think this is just the right touch of like that foodie type of deal without going too crazy overboard and being too realistic. Really cuddle worthy fragrance. In fact, I just, when I sniffed it right there, I got almost like a sense of like almost almond in the fragrance as well. So best for the season, great cuddle worthy fragrance. In the category of best everyday fragrance, I haven't reached for this one in a while, which is a shame because it is probably one of my favorite hidden gem fragrances. Let me pause and say that since starting my channel, I have tried literally, literally thousands of fragrances. And I would also say that something in the neighborhood of a thousand fragrances, like full bottles, have entered my house and they haven't all stayed. And that's just the nature of having a fragrance channel. You're constantly trying new things. You may think things are wonderful, but you don't 
You only have so much space on your shelves. So at some point, things make their way in and out. Your taste change, all sorts of factors play into what stays on a person's shelves versus what ends up going out the door. So for this fragrance to have entered the collection early on in my channel, and I have been a fragrance enthusiast for most of my life since I was a little kid. But of course, when you start a channel, you get curious about things and you want to share it with your audience and you start trying more, which then, you know, the trying begets collecting. It's a whole thing. We can talk about that another time. So all of that to say, when I first started my channel, this was one of the first waves. This came in in one of the first waves of fragrance purchases. And since then, a lot of those have made their way out and several have stayed. And this is one. And I tell you, when I, when I say to you that this is a hidden gem that deserves a lot more attention for being both a beautiful bottle and affordable, I'm talking about Katra in Rose from Boucheron. I love this whole line of fragrances, the design of them. The bottle itself is very, very pretty. This nudie, muted, rosy tone here, the ribbing here on the bottom, and then the top. This is some kind of metal that is now tarnished and I should probably clean up, but that is how you get to the atomizer. It's not a top that pops off, and I think that is just so clever and cute on the bottle. It is one of the prettiest, most feminine bottles in my collection. I love the color. The fragrance itself is a very soft rose, musky, sweet. There's black currant and rose in the fragrance. It has musk, a little bit of vanilla, and some woody background deep in the background. More than anything, a light, bright, fun, rose, sweet fragrance. And it's not imposing, and that's why I have it in the everyday category. It's one that I'm happy to over apply if you will like just spray myself down during the day and wear it has moderate longevity so it's going to take you maybe through like lunchtime if you apply it in the morning and then it sort of fades away you have to reapply but that said it's worth grabbing particularly as you're thinking about heading into spring or summer and if you're looking for a fragrance that is now more affordable i don't know what this came on the market at you know, for retail. I have no idea. When I purchased this, it was somewhere in the 30 to $60 range. I don't remember. I would say uh, check fragrance net. That's one of my favorite places to shop for bargain fragrances, but this holds its own against other rose sweet types of fragrances on the market from all brands. This one holds its own. And I mean, just look, it's pretty, it's pretty. Let's move on. My next one is my best special occasion fragrance of the ones that I wore in January. I talked about this in my So Fancy video. And I have to tell you, this is a fragrance that when I first tried, I wasn't sure if I was gonna get along with it. And then the more I let it sit on me, the more it really grew on me and it has a grip. It has a grip on my bougie heart, okay? This is Hale Bop from Tiziana Terenzi. Probably one of my favorite fragrances in my entire collection. I do enjoy these bottles that are hand blown. And I love that these are plated with real gold. Really, really fancy, heavy, substantial bottle. But the fragrance, let us talk about it. <laughs> I always talk about this being what I wish that Shalimar was. And Shalimar is a gorgeous fragrance from Guerlain. I mean, iconic, beautiful, all of the things. A little bit on the animalic side with the leather and the dry down for me. And I love leather. But there's something about that fragrance that is maybe a little, a little tiny bit too much for me to bear as a normal wear of a fragrance. So this one is a little bit softer on those types of edges than Shalimar is and has all of the aspects of Shalimar that I really do enjoy and think are worth sort of exalting. Here is an amber vanilla fragrance or a, a vanilla amber fragrance, depending on how it wears for you. For me, deep in the dry down, this is really, really heavy on a, a thick, almost like viscous vanilla amber combination, heavy on the vanilla, softer on the amber part. It has sweetness in it, and it has some spices that I think are really spectacular here. A combo of nutmeg and cinnamon that give this some edginess to it. In the opening, you get a little bit of citrus that, that is like sprightly and fun right there at the start. And then as it starts to settle down, you get this really mature, elegant, amber, vanilla, playful combo that uh, is uplifted by the spices that are in it, that cinnamon that gives it, you know, cinnamon can be memory evoking and can make you think of the holidays. For me, it brings me joy depending on how it's done. There are some fragrances that have doses of cinnamon where it's overbearing, like the cinnamon is too much in your face. I feel like it's just the right sprinkling here. And that vanilla, like I said, is just delicious in this fragrance. This is really, really projecting and long lasting and incredibly classy and sophisticated together. 
a fragrance that I'm so glad that I gave a chance to. Like I'm always saying, try your fragrances a few times, folks, before you give up on them completely. <laughs> you know, sometimes fragrances don't work out for us. And then other times, trying something initially is really not going to give you a good idea of how it settles down and plays on your skin. This is one that if I had given it away, you know, after trying it at first, and then I had smelled it on someone else, how amazing this smells, I would have kicked myself. This is an amazing one. In the category of sexiest fragrance, I need some help from my Italian speakers out there. My husband speaks Italian and we've gone over how to say this and I'm probably going to embarrass him. <laughs> By the way, he thinks this fragrance is amazing, which is why it's in this category. This was gifted to me by So Avant Garde. You're going to hear about this in an upcoming video. Prepare to be sick of this fragrance because I'm in love. And this is called Temptatio, Temptatio. And the brand Sometimes people say Vicanto, probably because they aren't sure how to say it. I think it's Quinto Canto, which means fifth song. So we're going to go with that. Quinto Canto, <laughs> the fragrance. So I've joked around about this line of fragrances and the Suspiro fragrances because they look like mummies to me or vampires or something. And especially the velvety ones, which kind of cracked me up. I really like this gold leafed bottle. I mean, you can see how it is applied on there, similar to the Moresque bottle, some of the gold leafed Moresque bottles. Very, very pretty, very pricey fragrance. If you're interested in this, I would check on So Avant Garde, and you can use Veronica 20 for 20% 20 off of this. Same thing for Hale Bop, or you can find this for a very nice price on Joma Shop. I have a link to Joma Shop in my description box as well. But this fragrance, when it came and I tried it on, my husband immediately went crazy for it. I have to tell you, this is very sort of quintessential Tiziano Terenzi scent. And the reason I bring that up is because the perfumer for this is Paolo Terenzi, who's the same perfumer for the Tiziano Terenzi line, and I think several other lines as well. This has that passion fruit musk combo that is very sort of characteristic of a lot of the Tiziano Terenzi fragrances. I'm starting to see that combo also show up in this house. So if you don't like that line of musk, that type of musk because it's a heavy musk that's used in those lines. And if you don't like that deep, almost like sticky, dark passion fruit scent that shows up in fragrances, you won't enjoy this. But if that's for you, my friends, this is the one. I find this to be highly alluring and sexy. It does remind me of Andromeda, which it is compared to on Fragrantica as well. I think this has an amped up fruit note in comparison to that one. I find Andromeda to be a little bit more musky, woody than this fragrance is. This is a little bit more fruit forward, if you ask me. There's a dark berry note and vanilla and peach and just like that melange of interesting notes that make the Tiziano Terenzi fragrances, a lot of them, both alluring and to some people repulsive. So let's just be upfront about that. I find them alluring. I'm a fan of them. This fragrance here was beast mode. I sprayed this on and... <laughs> It took me all through the evening. We went to sleep late the evening that I wore this and I was like, wow, this thing is still going at like 10 o'clock at night, really strong. And it stayed in my clothing to the point where I went, when I went to wash my clothing from that week and I pulled out the sweater, it was like, wow, almost as though I had sprayed it fresh. So this stays intact, intact, excuse me. Um, and so from that perspective is really worth looking into. My one caution with these fragrances is sometimes the plate falls off. So the day that this arrived was very cold and all of the fragrances were sitting on my porch for a bit and they'd gotten cold. And I think the glue might've loosened up a bit and this thing fell off. So I had to sort of press it back on. And at the price point, that kind of stinks, but I do like the bottle. And I do think that the fragrance itself is probably one of the sexiest fragrances in my collection. So welcome to the family, Temptatio. In the category of the biggest surprise is actually a fragrance combo. And I think that I have to credit this to one of our viewer fragrance friends here, Tati Perez. If you're watching Tati, hey girl, hey, she recommended this to me. And I believe she also has recommended this on a number of channels because I'll see her in the comments. And I keep thinking, I kept thinking, I have to try this. This sounds like it could be amazing. And she did not lead us astray. She was not lying. It is the combination of Brie Charnel from BDK, which by the way, is a love or hate for many people. And another love hate fragrance, Blanche Bet. So friends, the combo of these is next level, ethereal, dreamy, creamy, amazingness. <laughs> so Brie Charnel, 
you know, can come across to some people as a little drier or depending on how your nose reads the sandalwood, it can feel creamy. For me, it just depends on the day. There's some days this comes across a little drier, some days a little thicker and creamy, but it is a sandalwood fragrance with cardamom and tea. And for me, a little bit of fig. The fig is not as prominent in here as it is for some other folks for me. Sandalwood primarily here. This is one of the most lactonic fragrances out on the market right now. And if you don't know what lactonic means, it's just a fancy word for milky, friends. <laughs> now, this is so milky, it can feel a little bit thick and therefore, for me, sometimes come acro comes across creamy. There's tonka in the fragrance, tonka bean, vanilla, tuberose, and I forget what else, jasmine and some other notes. It can be a little musky. This is like a cloud of a mix between like milk and vanilla type of scents with uh, just enough floral to make it perfumey. Whereas this one tends to be a more sort of brooding scent for a rainy day type of situation. Some people find this a little masculine. If you purchase this and that's you, see if you can combine it with something milky and floral like this. This combo is dreamy. This adds enormous femininity to this fragrance. This adds some edginess to Blanche Bet to make this just the most divine combination that is really difficult to describe. I sprayed them together here, but I just remember thinking when I put this on, I've arrived. Like, I'm good. Y'all leave me alone for the day. I smell so good. I'm gonna just sit in the corner and like sniff myself all day. <laughs> it was that good. It was that good. Creamy sandalwood, spicy floral soft, elegant, amazing. In the category of best bottle, this is almost just an unfair comparison to any of the rest. Well, there's one other here that I think could potentially, potentially compete with what I'm about to show you. So I have recently become an affiliate of House of Sillage. As you know, House of Sillage is pricey, mucho pricey. <laughs> However, they do run some amazing sales and sometimes we'll have some of their fragrances half off. So I ended up jumping on the next one when I saw that it came up for 50% off. It was one that I was a little on the fence about. I wasn't sure if I would actually enjoy the scent profile or if I had enough of that type of scent in my collection. But there's something about this fragrance that called to me. I'm doing a lot of buildup here. Just bear with me. <laughs> bear with me. I used to be called this as a kid. I had friends that would call me this and I had a boyfriend in college that called me this and we didn't last long. <laughs> I didn't really enjoy being called this, but I do now have these sort of nostalgic memories of being called Wednesday. So, you know, I saw this online and thought that is so cute with the little hand running across. However, this is really what sold me this webbing on it which is done in some kind of metal. And then it's like mother of pearl on here and some other kind of inlay here, which I forget what this is called. And then you've got the different color crystals across the, the band here. And then it says house of sillage and Wednesday. So this is unfair. This is like putting Usain Bolt, you know, up against people that haven't conditioned to run and asking who's the best runner. <laughs> I mean, stinking cute. The bottle itself is like purple. Can we see, can, let me do this. Can you see that? Yes, there you go. You can see that it's purple. I'm trying to let the light from that come through. And it is just perfection. When I opened this, my jaw dropped. And the, bo the boxing for this is equally stunning. I mean, some of y'all care about packaging, some of y'all don't. At this price point, you want a nice box for it to come in. The box is gorgeous. This makes a great present for any fans of the movie, any fans of the character or the hand or any of it. This is so precious. The scent itself is actually nice for me. I don't think that those of you out there that prefer feminine fragrances will enjoy this. I do think that the scent is rather unisex, maybe even masculine leaning. It's a rose patchouli woody combo with a little bit of spiciness to it. I will say this, when I sprayed this, my husband, this is another one that he was like, that is so good. And he asked me to wear it the next day. He thought it was really great and he loved it on me the next day. What I like about the fragrance, in addition to the scent profile, which is intriguing and interesting and kind of looks how the bottle, the feeling that the bottle gives you, I like that the fragrance isn't overwhelming at all. It did last me throughout the day, but the bubble was maybe, you know, a couple of feet off of me at the most. So in that sense, it's a very non-imposing scent, but I, 
I might be going down this rabbit hole. I have to tell y'all, I ended up purchasing Wonder Woman, the new one at half off. And I ended up purchasing mini, the 100, I think it's called mini 100 uh, for the hundredth anniversary, the purple one that looks like Epcot center at the top. We'll talk about those in another video. So, so precious, the bottles and half off. It felt like a no brainer to me. So I do have to tell you all, if you are interested in house of Siage, they have moved their shipping policy and are now charging. At least I got charged $19.99 for each of the bottles that I have uh, purchased from them. And so that may be a bit of a turnoff to folks, but for those of you that are bottle obsessed, like I can be, you might not care about it. So I'll leave that to your decision. But this by far is the, I mean, it was like, it was an unfair thing, unfair competition between this and anything else in the month of January. <laughs> In the category of worst bottle, I've talked about these before, and so I feel like I'm being unfair and picking on this bottle yet again. It is Note Vani Nectar from M. Mikalef. So I'm not sure what's happening here on the sides. I don't understand the crystals. I just don't get it. If somebody understands what this design is about, please do let me know. The Nectar version, not the regular Note Vani, but the Nectar version only comes in this size, at least when I went to purchase it, and that was... I don't know, six to eight months ago or something like that. So I prefer the white bottles that have that beautiful sort of gold leafing on it. Those are really, really pretty. I don't know what's happening here. The fragrance here though is lovely. It's a nice, nice, sweet and citrusy, powdery vanilla fragrance. And it has some booziness to it as well. But more than anything, a powdery vanilla um, that has some brightness from the citrus and it's nicely lasting, decently projecting, not beast mode at all, but definitely not an underperforming fragrance by any means. A little pricey, okay? But I, yeah, so let's not go on. <laughs> not a fan, not a fan of this bottle. In the category of favorite blind buy, and I'd like to explore more from this house is from Noem, and this is Soma. I do enjoy these bottles. And I think someone looked this up for me and mentioned something about this having like a snake motif. And I am now picking up in the middle, a little bit of a snake there. What that has to do with the fragrance? I don't know, friends. <laughs> this is in the same family as Angel Share and Ojan and Sugar Leather and those types of almost like they're boozy, vanilla, ambery, smelling like fall, all things beautiful fall and winter, ambery types of fragrances. Some folks have picked up cherry in this. And since I've heard that in reviews, I'm like, oh, I think I kind of can, can smell a little bit of that. And I wonder if that comes from the heavy Tonka bean in the fragrance. Sometimes Tonka in fragrances can show up or uh, have a, uh, give the nose a feeling of having like a cherry nuance in the fragrance. So I now get that, that people are saying that. I still wouldn't call this a cherry fragrance. But I get it. I get how people pick that up. For me, this is heavy on the amber and vanilla and like a booziness that makes this really, really good for fall and winter. This is one of those great sort of fireplace fragrances, fall festival, if it's cool. I mean, we're past the fall festival timeline here, friends. But you may still be going to occasions where you want the fragrance that you're wearing to hold up against the cold. And this is a good one for that. I do like these bottles as well. And so this has been my favorite blind buy. Long lasting, decent scent bubble, and definitely in that same family with those other quintessential fall winter fragrances. This category is not a safe blind buy. And I struggle with this because I do think that this is a safe fragrance for people that like this type of scent. But so many people have heavily disliked this, including my own sister. I felt like she betrayed me. <laughs> we were walking through Macy's and I was like, you got to try this one. I spritzed it on her and she immediately was like, ew, <laughs> she hated this. And so we had a good chuckle about it. I love it. I think it smells great on me. I even like the kitschy bottle. This is Devotion from Dolce & Gabbana. So one of you out there, was it Alma? Hey girl, hey. She talked about this looking like, I forget what it's called, but it's a, like a Mexican symbol of the heart and it's a um, like a Catholic symbol. I, I forget, one of you knows, please let us know in the comments. But I just love that now that I, I have that association. So thank you, girl. So you get a really sort of sweet vanilla, lemon, orange blossom fragrance. And that's kind of it. That's what the fragrance is about. There are other notes, but that's really what you get. Imagine lemon that has like the sweetest part of lemonade. You make lemonade that's so sweet. It's almost like, like lethal. Like you're like, whoa, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to die of sugar overload there. Imagine that. And imagine the beautiful, sweet softness of orange blossom accompanied by a delicious vanilla base. I think this is great. It's fun. It's flirty. It's dreamy. It's 
cozy. It's very girly and I'm here for it. So in the category of overhyped, this one has found a new home. So if you're out there and you purchased it, thank you. I hope that it is all of the things that you dreamed and hoped for. But I have to say for me, Vanilla Love by Jimmy Choo was close to being a flop, I have to say. It's one that was, in my opinion, like heavily overhyped. Folks were loving on it. They were searching for it. It showed up on Joma Shop. We love ourselves a good Joma Shop sale. And it was inexpensive. It was like $70. So I was like, sure, I'll grab that. And I wore that fragrance probably three times total to give it a fair shot, like I always tell everyone to do. And it just fell so flat for me. I wasn't getting what everyone else was. People talked it, about it being this spicy, sexy vanilla. And I just got a pretty boring vanilla. Maybe that fragrance should have been called Vanilla Sex. <laughs> And maybe the Tom Ford one should be called Vanilla Love. I have not even tried Vanilla Sex by Tom Ford with all that smack talking I just did. That's gotten some really interesting reviews. Have you tried it? And if you have, let me know in the comments. Some people love it and think it is like the coziest, loveliest almond vanilla powdery fragrance. And other people are like, what? And how much are you charging for this? So for that reason alone, I want to try it and see what I think. But Vanilla Love from Jimmy Choo. I don't love you. I don't love you. So that went to a new home. I couldn't do it. I'm going to go out on a limb with my hidden gem choice for this round because it's not technically hidden, but it came out. A couple of folks talked about it and then it went in the back of folks' shelves and no one talked about it again. And it's a fairly new release. So I feel like in that sense, it became hidden quick, but it deserves a lot more attention. So have you tried 100 Silent Ways from Nishane? If you have tried that, you know that is a soft floral with sandalwood and tuberose, and I think a peach note, I don't get much of the peach, but soft tuberose vanilla sandalwood fragrance. Very feminine, almost dainty. This is <laughs> 100 Silent Ways has come home from work. She's ready for a night out on the town. She's put on her black Christian Louboutin stilettos. <laughs> she has thrown on her Wonder Woman cape, and she's ready for a night out on the town. It's 100 Silent Ways X. I've talked about these plates. I'm not crazy about this X that reminds me of the 80s series V. Do you remember V, like the aliens? That it scared the crap out of me as a kid. This fragrance, though, is so beautiful. This is one that I could not stop spraying myself with. And so that's a pretty big dent for the few times that I've worn it because it's really good. And it's one of those that, like, it's a sleeper. You spray it on and you think, that's all right. You go on about your day and you keep sniffing yourself and going, is it me? Am I the one that smells that amazing? And so this is one of the easiest, most feminine leather wares that I think a lady could ask for. So for those of you that like Bottega Veneta, Veneta, Bottega Veneta, however y'all say that y'all, uh, the leather that's in there is sort of soft, almost to the point of feeling suede. I feel like you get that similar kind of feel in here with the soft white florals and vanilla in the background. And it is a divine power combination for you ladies who want the fragrance to be feminine, but you like a little bit, you like a little bit of edge on it. This is the one for you. Long lasting, nicely projecting throughout the day, not scary at all. This is really, really An well done. Easy wear. And I love how intoxicating the suede leathery aspect of it. This is, it keeps you like coming back to sniff for more. So this gets a huge thumbs up from me, especially in a world where we have release after release after release to the point that we even forget what we've purchased. This is one that needs to come to the front of folks collection. So this is a new category in recent months and it's called worth hunting down. This is a fragrance that I purchased, I think a couple of years ago from a site called Enchant Perfumes out of Canada. So check them out. They do a lot of rare and vintage fragrances that are discontinued. You can't find anywhere else. I don't see this on their website anymore. I do see it on like eBay and that sort of thing. And of course, as always, be very careful shopping on those sites. We can talk about that another day. And in fact, I talked about it in a previous video. Just be careful on secondhand sites. Certainly feel free to shop through there. But if you're inexperienced, I would say look up all of the tips for shopping for rare or vintage items on secondhand sites so that you know what you're looking at and can go in informed. 
Vought said, this is called Bell Dopium from YSL. So this was a flanker of opium. And the only other fragrance that I know that smells like this, I used to have in my collection and I sold. It's called Ruhi Tabak or Tahabak from Rasazi. And I think that one is also hard to find now too. And I, I want to say that it was either a dupe or very close to this. So, you know, if you look at the notes for this, it tells you that this is an incense fragrance. And yes, I think it has some of that like dark mysteriousness that an incense fragrance can have, but I don't find it to be incense -y. It's just, it has like this, it's a night fragrance. You know, it's like a queen of the night type of deal with this really deep, sweet fruitiness. It's like a melange of fruit notes. But for me, it's like the deepness of like the blackest berry, the blackest blackberry. Imagine like it's almost rotten. It's so sweet. You know, it's been sitting out on the counter because you want it at room temperature and you bite into it. That, that sweet, delicious, like thick, syrupy sweetness, sweet berry sweetness is what's here with a woodiness from sandalwood some white florals, and a little bit of tobacco. This is divine. I love to wear this. It makes me feel very feminine. It makes me feel very old glamour-ish, you know, like old Hollywood glamour style, very mature feminine fragrance, and just fabulous, but hard to find. It's got decent longevity and decent projection, you know, not quite like this one. Like it's not going to last you into the next day. You know? worth, worth hunting down if you can find it, and if you like that type of scent profile. I have two low fragrances and six high fragrances for the month. And then we will wrap up this very long video. <laughs> so one of the low fragrances is a fragrance that I actually hunted down because I think it's discontinued and hard to find. It's called Cocoa Woods from Nest. It has gone to a happy new home. And I think what happened here is this is a very dry, like it, it, it smells like cocoa. Like when you peel open a tin of cocoa and the powder is has a dryness to it, that it's almost like dry and woody smelling that is what the fragrance smells like and it does have some woodiness and a little bit i think of sweetness from vanilla but it has a, it's a dry feeling fragrance overall and has a little tiny bit of earthiness to it and so the day that i wore this i sprayed it on and thought i'm just not maybe like in love with this fragrance profile perhaps the way that i was when i first got it when i first got it into the collection like a year and a half ago i was having this chocolate moment i think it was two years ago i was having this chocolate moment where i wanted to get my nose on all the chocolate fragrances in the world including that one and i really enjoyed it at the time and then the most recent time that i tried it it just didn't feel like me anymore and i ended up pairing it with Kayali's Vanilla 28 to give it some sweetness. And it just it just wasn't hitting the mark. And I couldn't tell you why. My family didn't enjoy it on me either. They complained about it. And so I was like, well, maybe it's time for my time with this fragrance to come to an end. So I ended up selling that. Then there was a second fragrance I wore this month that I don't know. I can't tell you why exactly. It I wouldn't say it like rubbed me the wrong way, but it just it didn't give me the experience that I was hoping for. And I've had that happen with this fragrance the past few times that I've worn it. When I first got it into the collection, I thought that, okay, this is nice. I'm going to give this a try, like I always do. And I kept wearing it and just never like fell in love with it. I never disliked it. And I still don't dislike it now. I'm just not sure that it's one that I would desire to wear often. And it's in a line of fragrances that I really love. And I think that might be part of the reason that I was like obsessed with it because I was having this like completionist moment where I wanted everything in this lineup and it's amethyst haze from Carolina Herrera and so I sprayed it and as I'm sniffing it today here on the blotter I'm realizing that probably what is not meshing with me is that this is probably like a men's fragrance more than anything else not that I mind a men's fragrance I have lots of masculine leaning fragrances that I enjoy and I like a lot on my husband's shelf as well but I'm not finding an aspect of this that really meshes well with my personality per se. As I'm looking at the notes, the prominent notes are lavender and spice from cardamom, a woodiness, coffee, and I forget what else here. Let's see, vanilla. I don't know. That's it. I just, I don't know. And if I have to think that hard about a fragrance that I've actually worn a number of times, that's probably my hint that maybe it isn't the one for me. So I wouldn't be surprised if this shows up on my Mercari. If you're interested, Mercari is linked below. You can check out what I have for sale there. So I think Amethyst Haze and I, we might be parting ways. 
So then we're going to talk about my six top fragrances of the month. But before I do that, I do want to give a shout out to Lady Biscuit from Shabod, Sh Shabod, Sh whatever, here, this one. I have worn this to bed several times this month, and I love this for a cold winter's night. It is one of the coziest, sweetest, most dreamy little fragrances. I don't know if you remember when I first purchased this and talked about it in a new beauties video, which is where I share the ones that have joined the collection. I wasn't sure how I would feel about this. I knew that it smelled good, but I was wondering if it would last long. I wasn't crazy about this little cap situation here, but... <laughs> this sprayed on my nighttime robe. So when I'm done with my entire evening routine and I put on my barefoot dreams robe because I'm loving that lately, bought myself a second one as a matter of fact, I spray this on. You can see I'm making my way through this. You actually don't need a lot in a bed environment. <laughs> when you're that up close and intimate with your partner, one or two sprays is all you need. Me, I'm spraying four, five, and six of this and my poor husband's like, babe, you're choking me out. And I'm like, I don't care because it smells so good. What do we smell here? It's like a vanilla wafer. That's what it reminds me of. Remember vanilla wafers? Gosh, I went through boxes of that as a child. I love this, the taste of that sort of vanilla, almost like cracker type of smell combined. Really good bedtime scent. So this actually does get a really big thumbs up from me. But top six, I'm gonna have to fly through these because I have kept y'all this long in this video. Thank you for staying. If you're still there, can you drop me a yellow heart in the comments so I know you made it through to this part of the video? I adore Flor de Orientica. This is from Orientica, which is either a sister or, sub or subsidiary of Al Haramein. This is a dupe for, for Flor Narcotique from Ex Nihilo. I purchased this. I purchased Melody de Orientica, which is a dupe for Memo Sintra. I purchased Rose de Orientica, which I can't figure out what that's a dupe of, except for Burning Rose from Carolina Herrera, but I don't think that's what it's duping. Anyway, that's sitting out on my Mercari. This, and then I purchased the leather one too, Queer de Orientica. This is beautiful, beast mode. For those of you that like an affordable fragrance that really does not let you down, this is one that you want to look at. It is floral and musky and sweet, like a, a sweet floral musky fragrance. It has a clean musk in it. It's very similar to Vallea from Parfums de Marley, except this has the sweet fruitiness that that one does not. <sighs> this is good. This is good, good. It can be overpowering for many people. It is a very mature smelling fragrance. So you got to know what you're getting yourself into. If you have not sampled Flor Nar Narcotique from Ex Nihilo, try that first and see if that's for you. And if you don't like that price tag, check out Flor de Orientica magnificent and has been hanging tough in an age of declutter when many of my dupe fragrances have left my collection and found new homes this one is still standing tall standing tall among the floral powerhouse beauties in my collection <laughs> then this one needs no introduction and we're not going to spend long on it because a lot of folks talk about rosendo mateo number five and this is number six which it's, it tells you right here jasmine sandalwood and musk this is soft, this is smooth, this is mega sexy, mega appealing. This is dreamy, like a dreamy, woody, highly feminine, alluring. I don't even know how to describe this except it's fabulous. It can be really easy to overspray as you see here. I can't get enough of this one. Smooth, creamy, pretty, easy to wear, crowd pleasing, beautiful. You've heard me talk about this one too, and it's hard to get your hands on this. And so I won't go on and on, but La Oud from Maison Lancome. Do a Google search for this if you're interested and see what comes up, like where it's on sale, because it'll change. Like you might be able to find this on FragranceNet or FragranceX or one of those types of sites. This smells like church incense in the most beautiful way. Rose, Oud, other florals, maybe some spices and some touches of incense husband loves this on me. When I wear this, he's like, wow, wow, wow. It's like a stunner of a fragrance. This is really, really good. Really strong. You don't need a lot of this. You don't need a lot of this. A few sprays will take you through the entire day. You have to like a deep, mature rose and a really soft oud with that sort of incense-y vibe. The combo, if the combo of that sounds appealing to you, this is the one. Another favorite of the month is J'adore Lore by Dior which is the creation of Francis Kirkjohn. And this is fresh florals. It's, I mean, it, when you look at the description, it talks about something about sensual gold, this, that, and the other. <laughs> I guess it does have sort of a sensuality to it. 
but I smell clean florals. Like imagine a bouquet. This is what I get. Imagine if someone has a bouquet of florals in hand, they're white flowers. And so you get that sort of fresh, dewy scent that a bouquet of white flowers can give you, like the flower shop smell. You know what I mean? That fresh floral smell. And imagine if someone had a sweet perfume on next to that and that sort of combined in the air and hit you in the face. <laughs> Here is what you get. I, when I spray this, cannot stop spraying. And so that, thus my dent, okay? <laughs> it's one of those that can be a little bit intoxicating and I have to be careful not to over spray. And I always think it's weird how when I show this on video, my head shows up upside down in the little crystal ball. Creepy. Anyway, this is just glorious. Glorious for those of you that are white floral lovers and for those of you that appreciate a clean feminine floral absolutely beautiful, loved in this house. And then a fragrance so beautiful that it makes me want to cry. And I, I don't, I mean, cry like tears down my face. <laughs> it's, it's that divine. <laughs> I just want to grip something. This is from Andrea Mack and this is called Pavilion. So I had a chance to sample this entire house as an affiliate of Twisted Lily and got on a webinar where Andrea Mack herself was talking about the inspiration of all of her fragrances. And when we got to this one and I sniffed it, I tuned out. Like I didn't even hear what people were saying. The edges of the room got fuzzy for me. It was just like I was having a moment, me and this, <laughs> this fragrance. So the closest thing I can tell you that this smells like is Oud Satin Mood from MFK. It's close to that but it's more intoxicating than that if you can imagine such a thing imagine that the rose is a little bit more amped up but in a very sort of creamy sensual way there's the addition or the amping up of the oud because there's that's an oud fragrance too and the powder is dialed back just enough because i find oud satin mood to be a little bit powder forward more so than the other notes there's a sweetness from vanilla and a bunch of complexity <laughs> it's just a very complex intoxicating fragrance I have to say, my husband was not as much of a fan of this as I am. And this is one that I just had to override his taste on and be like, I'm sorry, I'm just going to wear this one because it is magnificent. This is probably one of my favorite purchases of the past year. Yes, I purchased this with my own little dollars, y'all. Oh my God. Mm, mm. <laughs> you have to like a bit of an edgy rose fragrance. The powder, the oud, the vanilla, all of that. It's just. Ah, so good. I'll end with a fragrance that really defies description and is the priciest of the bunch. And that's probably the reason I kept it here toward the end. But I have to tell you, I love this fragrance. I lusted after it for a full time, but I just refused to pay the full price for it. And I saw it on a sale that I just could not pass up on Joma Shop and I snatched it up. The packaging on it is divine. It comes in this, this ostentatious, pretentious, over the top presentation <laughs> where you open up the box and the thing lights up and it's sitting in this chamber of water. What? This is Atlantide or Atlantide as we Americans like to call it, <laughs> but it's Atlantide from Tiziana Terenzi. Some people hate the sea star look. What do you think? Do you like that it's draped over the bottle or does it kind of kind of gross you out. <laughs> I think some people think it's creepy looking. I think it's so pretty. And I was today years old when I realized that this is clear, this piece here. And I think the only reason I realized that is because I started to use some of it up so you can see the fluid in there, right? So anyway, my husband picked this out for our one date night that we had. He really, he really loves this and I do too, but I am a tuberose lover and friends, friends, this is a tuberose fragrance through and through. You have to like fracas. You have to like, um, remember Truth or Dare from Madonna, those types of tuberose fragrances. Any tuberose fragrance that has a lot of greenness in it, maybe even like Rouge Malachite, something like that. I don't think this smells like that, but it has to be a bold tuberose. This is a fresh, full, robust tuberose fragrance with, a, for me, it feels like it has a lot of greenness in it. I described this when I first sampled it as having an emerald color. You know, sometimes you smell a scent and it either has a taste association and or a color association. For me, I saw the color emerald green. There was something like deep in here that reminded me of greenness and fragrance and greenness as a color. And then later on, the tuberose starts to really take over. And it's like I said, a fresh, robust tuberose that's 
You know what else this reminds me of? Carnal Flower from Frederick Mall. They're in the same family. They're not identical. They're all different from each other. Like that one ends up in the dry down carnal flower having a little bit of a tropical feel. I think there's a, a coconut note or something like that in that fragrance that comes across. This one stays really sort of fresh and airy, but commanding. It's a very commanding tuberose fragrance. I don't find this cloying at all. And it is very, very pricey, but I have to tell you, probably my favorite tuberose in my entire collection at this point. And I love that I can actually see <laughs> through the little window where I am with using up this fragrance. I love this. I love this. So all in all, January was a fantastic fragrance month with the exception of maybe Cocoa Woods, which just, you know, I wasn't vibing with anymore. And then Amethyst Haze, which is a beautiful fragrance, but I think maybe it doesn't feel like me. That's probably a good way to put it. And that's it, everything else. But I have to tell y'all, this bottle, love, 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 love. Pavilion, wow. Like breathtakingly wow. And then this beauty, I mean, steal my heart. Take all my money. Take all my money. Friends, let me know your thoughts on the January Fragrance Awards. Let us know in the comments what you enjoyed wearing this month. And I'll see you in the next video. Remember, warm up your wallets. Those sales are coming. And we're going to have a lot of fun purchasing some of the ones that we've been dreaming about here. So take care. See you soon.